scholar. Today, we are having a discussion on a book by leading publisher as well as a scholar. Parmod Kapoor is a good publisher, everyone knows, but he's also a scholar that I discovered when I went through his book, New Delhi Making of a Capital, the amount of research he did in India and abroad and the way he conceived and produced that book. Now, we have two panelists, again, a very senior army officer, General D.D. Sandhu, but again, academician with a PhD in defense studies, and later he was vice chancellor for lucky. The other panelist, Dr. Kamal Kinger, a distinguished academician who agreed on a rather short notice. In the morning, he had his own function, but he spared time to, he managed to read the book. And Dr. Ravel Singh is busy, but I request him to be joining us. And Madhuri Chawla teaches English literature, but somehow willy-nilly who made our the Punjab expert. Uh, you know, by Veer Singh, Syed Southern, headed by Dr. Manmohan Singh, is emerged as a primary center for study of language, literature, and culture of Punjab. Every month we discuss a good book and a one lecture. Uh, you know, these are the days of celebration of centenaries who celebrated 550th birth century of Guru Nanak with a series of lectures. The inaugural lecture was delivered by Professor B. N. Goswami and presented by Dr. Manmohan Singh himself. And we had a concluding lecture by Professor Rajit Singhil, distinguished linguist, and presented by J.P.S. Oberoi, distinguished sociologist. Uh, then we had lectures on Guru Tegh Bahadur, but with a difference. We remember those who were also martyred with the Gurus. We all remember Guru Tegh Bahadur. What about Sati Das, Mati Das, Dyal Das? His great devout Sikhs, they knew the consequences of going with the Guru, but they were so devout, they also suffered martyrdom. We had lectures on them, who are commissioning monographs on them. That is our small tribute to these great six. Now this year, country celebrating 75 years of independence, we thought we should talk about Punjab's contribution towards freedom. We had a lecture by Mirdula Mukherjee, highlighting contribution of the peasants. We all know Pagdi Samal, Jatta Pagdi Samal, how the peasants in those days forced the powerful British Viceroy to withdraw the bills which were not acceptable to the peasantry. Now we all study and we are proud that Mahatma Gandhi got us freedom through non-violent means, but we should not ignore there were others like Indian National Army and the mutiny in the Royal Indian Navy, which really made great sacrifices. I think Parmod Kapoor has done as a service by doing a book on the mutiny by the naval officers, junior officers, which really created a nervousness among the British rulers and which hastened the transfer of power. For this, I think this is the area which is reserved for our two distinguished panelists and the author. I should not talk more about the book, but before I request Dr. Madhuri Chawla to conduct the function, who would like it to watch a short video which will set the tone for the discussion to follow. The when the over to video. Working? Yeah. Sound near. Are sound you sound. Yeah, getting? No, we're not getting sound, sir. Them. Okay. Yeah, I think. You, you can start sound? again if you like. Start again. That's better. Hmm, that's a good, good tribute.
Thank you. How are you, Madri? Thank you so much, sir. That was a wonderful teaser. In fact, I think all those who must have, who have seen this today must be uh, quite inquisitive now to know more about the mutiny. And I'm sure they'll all grab a copy of the book very soon. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mahinda Singh Ji, and a very good afternoon to the panelists and the audience who have logged in with us today. Uh, we connect today for discussion on the book 1946, Last War of Independence, Royal Indian Navy Mutiny. The book is published by Roli Publications and it is authored by Sri Prabhupada Kapoorji. On behalf of National Institute of Punjab Studies, Bhai Veer Singh Sahitya Sadhan, I extend a very warm welcome to our panelists for the day, former ADC, former Vice Chancellor, Kurukshetra University, Lieutenant General Dr. DDS Sandhu, PVSM, and Professor Kamal Kingar, Professor and Head, Department of Defense and Strategic Studies, Punjabi University, Patiala. Uh, Professor Kingar, I have very <laughs> fond memories of Punjabi University, as it happens to be my alma mater too. Oh, okay. Of course, wow. long you know? back. Sorry? Which year? I uh, did my MPhil in 88. I joined this university in 88. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I handed over the baton to you, I suppose. <laughs> Hartej and Rashmi Prabhakar must be your seniors. Hartej is my batchmate, sir. They are your uh, batchmate. Hartej Tivana. Uh, yeah, yes. she's my batchmate. Yeah, yeah, they are they are family friends, and okay, me okay. and Guru Chandu have one one more thing in common that we are uh, both PhD from <laughs> Punjab University Patiala, and uh, we have uh, same supervisor, Professor R N Mishra. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we have Patiala is in any case common with all of us. Yes, after Patiala Shahi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also welcome the author of the book, Sri Pramod Kapoorji. Sri Kapoor is the founder of the prestigious publishing house Roli Books. Professor Ravel Singh, convener, Punjabi Advisory Board, Sahitya Academy, is also amidst us, and I extend a very warm welcome to him as well. He's a constant support in the organization of all the events and programs of the Southern. And uh, before we begin, first and foremost, I am extremely thankful to the panelists and to Mahinder Singh Ji. Uh, as well as the author for accommodating the change in date despite their busy schedule. It is indeed a matter of great honor for me to moderate a session for such an esteemed panel. And I'm deeply indebted to the Southern for providing me this opportunity. Moderating panel discussions on important books has been a great learning experience for me as I have got introduced to books on uh, diverse subjects and uh, subjects other than the primary area of my uh, education, which is literature, and thus it has uh, widened my horizon. This particular book by Sri Pramod Kapoorji, 1946, The Last War of Independence, Royal Indian Navy Mutiny, has been praised by media as well as by the intellectuals, including as we just saw in the short uh, film, uh, Professor Ashish Nandi, William Dalimpul, and Sham Benegal have all highly praised the book. I would like to confess that though I had read about the Royal Indian Navy mutiny, I too, like many others, had never realized how important it was for our independence. And uh, rightly referred to as, uh, I would say, a critically important but partly forgotten story, one really gets a feeling that probably the mutiny has deliberately been relegated to being a mere footnote in the history of our freedom struggle. There's always a perspective as we were just discussing just before opening. And uh, even though I have not been a student of history, this book, which is the result of in-depth research by Sri Kapoor, is indeed an eye-opener. The extent of brutality of the British, the relationship between the mutiny and the cabinet mission plan, and so many other facts like the responses of important leaders, parties, et cetera. Uh, they were revelations to me. Dr. Nandi rightly says, and I read here, 
he says this book is a challenge to us to take a second look at our revered political figures whose charismatic public presence often hid their insecure ruthlessness and narcissism so i go <laughs> absolutely agree with that and uh, one of the chapters of the book it is titled the secret heroes who planned the mutiny it narrates the tales of the hitherto unsung un undermined heroes of the naval mutiny and i think they deserve recognition as well and uh, the mutiny seems to be really important and it needs to be seen as an important part of the national struggle for independence i am sure that my knowledge will be further enriched uh, after listening to the experts and their presentations today and uh, i'm sure the jacket of the book must have impressed all who have seen the book just like it left me awestruck it's <laughs> it's so colorful and yet there is so much passion in that cover and uh, as i saw inside i read that the cover image is a detail from a painting by shri chitra prasad bandhopadhyay uh, a sensitive and socio politically alive artist and actually i feel the idea of selecting from a from a larger painting of this no holds barred artist as it says could have occurred only to a committed author having knowledge and experience in the field of publication as well and no wonder shri pramod kapoor being in publishing business since 1978 had an eye for it and very soon he will be completing 50 years in the field and i'm sure that we will celebrate the golden jubilee with uh, a discussion on another of his <laughs> masterpiece uh well these are just a few of my observations and takeaways from the book as a lay person and like everyone else i too am eager to be enlightened by the informed and profound presentations of our esteemed panelists who would give us a nuanced view and perspective of this very interesting piece of work and our first speaker for the day is lieutenant general dr dds sandhu Dr Sandhu is a graduate of the Defence Service Staff College Wellington a post graduate in defence studies from Madras University and MPhil in defence and management studies from Devi Ahilya Bai University Indore General Saab having an inclination towards research on vital issues of military logistics acquired his PhD degree in international marketing of Indian defence products from Punjabi University Patiala He also happens to be the first army officer to have been awarded honorary degree of doctorate by president Dr APJ Abdul Kalam during the convocation held at Jabalpur. The general also got an MBA in materials management from Rani Durgavati Vishwavidyalaya Jabalpur and MDBA from IIM Pune. He is also a fellow of the British Institute of Management, honorary fellow and member of Board of Studies of the Indian Institute of Materials Management, and patron of the Asian Council of Logistics Management. So we would love to listen to you as long as you are willing to enlighten us. But unfortunately, because of paucity of time, we will have to stick to a twenty-minute time frame. uh and uh this unfortunate duty is always mine to inform the panelists but no problem uh, the uh, it's all the platform is all yours now sir thank you thank you at the outset i must ka on karna yes fine clear sir sir fix sir abhi nahi Sorry, there's a little confusion. This point, this point. It, it always happens with technology. At the outset, I must say uh, that uh, I had heard in passing of this uh, of this mutiny, even as even as one as a, a student of military history. But it was never a kind of part of the mainstream military history or events leading up to India's independence. It is only mm -hmm. after reading this book. that one has understood the import of this and i congratulate uh, dr pramod kapoor uh, for the excellent research that he has done and at times uh, the book is actually reading like a, a racy action novel particularly when he starts off by the by the day, day by day events and he goes into the minds and the actions of the characters in a very uh, professional manner 
that one feels that you are actually talking to them and listening to them and you can empathize with them and you can visualize them going through that task whichever is there. It's a fantastic exposition of this. It, uh, what uh, immediately surprised me was that this mutiny which took place in 1946 was preceded by nine previous mutinies which one had not un which had one had not heard of but which were papered over by the British right these nine I have uh, Trying to get a slide on for that. We just they are starting from 1942 onwards. Mm. 3rd March 42 in Bombay, 22nd June 42 in UK, 3rd September in Orissa, 42 in Khyber. Uh, these are names of the ships. Uh, 44 mm. in Akbar and Hamlawar and HMS IS, the HMIS Himalaya. And then another one on 17th April 1945. Now, mm -hmm. so basically, all of them had their genesis in say, bad conditions or uh, bad treatment. And this is what led to this mutiny in 1946 also. The important thing that I would like to emphasize is though that this mutiny started off at something which was related to bad uh, living conditions bad things, clothing, misleading advertisements of recruitment, training facilities, desertion, and absolutely terrible living conditions where people were overcrowded, there were no thoughts, etc. and all. And it was precipitated by foul language and blatant racism uh, used uh, 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 by, the, by the British officers. One uh, was nurtured and grown up in the army, always believing that the Britishers uh, were absolutely one-to-one -one with the Indian army soldiers, etc. and all. This book has given a new perspective. Obviously, that was just, that is just a veneer because when it comes down, whether it is King or the, uh, who became the uh, uh, captain of the ship or even it is a Godfrey who was the chief admiral, all of them had absolutely no respect for the Indian soldier whatsoever. I mean, the, um, the kind of broadcast that uh, Godfrey made uh, was laced with absolutely malice and um, uh, threatening language, and which was uh, surprisingly not uh, objected to even by the political leaders who were um, uh, negotiating with the British at that time. I will come back to the role of the political leaders a little later because I think that I would not like to go through the sequence of the book. It is in 16 chapter, chapters. I've said it is written very, very well and it gives the complete details if somebody wants to find out how, how the thing is gone. I think what we need to do as um, uh, academicians or analysts is to find out as to what lessons can we draw from this or what are the, what are the things that were hidden from the general public and how, as the, as the moderator said, putting um, uh, Ashish Nandi as to what the, um, uh, the ambition of the um, uh, leaders whom we revere today had actually um, uh, sold these uh, uh, ratings um, uh, down the river. The amazing thing about this uh, mutiny is that all the ratings were in the age group of 16 to 25. And even the leaders who were there, they were just the Khan and Madan Singh. They were in the Khan was about 25, and Madan Singh was also in his 20s. And they were a product. So the majority of the uh, mutineers, or I would as they call them, the ratings who were there, they were uh, Hindus, but they're still in the strike committee that they formed. It was led by Khan, and Madan was the deputy. Madan Singh was the shaven of Sikh. And uh, Khan was, of course, a Muslim. So therefore, it was a great example of national unity, which when I come to the later part of my talk, I will show that how Jinnah and uh, uh, Nehru and Patel were on different pages as far as this was concerned as uh, dealing with the uh, mutiny proper. Uh, therefore, when one 
looks at the uh, current government's efforts to rewrite history or to bring out lost facets of history uh, earlier one was very um, uh, cynical about that that they are trying to rewrite history but after reading this book one feel that yes that there are aspects of history which need to be revisited and they need to be brought out to the general public so that uh, the uh, amazing part about this mutiny is that it spread so fast it started off on 18 february and within a span of a day or so it spread to almost um, uh, 20000 rating 71 ships and 20 shore establishment but this was time when we didn't have any uh, uh, mobile phones etc we were all mm-hmm. doing it on the basis of their uh, uh mosque code etc again uh, but somewhere around the book uh, uh, dr kapoor brings out that they made the fatal mistake or uh, in their excitement and in their uh, exuberance of not coding it in mosque and sending it in clear so therefore the british were privy to whatever uh, uh, was happening so therefore uh, i think it was the inexperience of these people and their leadership the immaturity primarily because of that and very sad fact that none of the indian officers none of the indian officers save one lieutenant shobani nobody else sided with them and i am uh, uh, i don't know how to say this but i am going to say it though it may be professionally or politically incorrect that two of those people who were there were four or five officers on hms or, or on that ship and out of them were two they were sent two by two hasan and one more guy was sent to talk to them and then nanda and um, um, the other name i forget who also became a chief um, they were sent mm-hmm. nanda and uh, kohli kohli nanda and kohli <laughs> they were sent to talk to them and they were hooted away by the uh, um, uh, 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 by the ratings over there who were fighting for them and uh, uh, ultimately i don't know what the whether there's a flaw in our system or whatever it is there both of these gentlemen came out became uh, chiefs and uh, <laughs> poor shobhani was 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 court martial another amazing fact which uh, one was aware of but it never set sunk in in life was that the indian navy continued to be commanded by a britisher till 22 april 1958 Eleven years after independence, something like that in Royal Indian Navy. Again, like I said, history needs to be revisited. If you feel that people don't have the experience to command um, uh, an army or uh, even the army uh, when the 1948 war was there, it was commanded by a British general. Now, if you don't pass uh, one rating, very uh, uh, put it beautifully. Put, I'll quote that a little later. that um, um, you feel that you can you have the even when you have no training or you have no experience you can become the prime minister of a country but a soldier a sailor who has 12 years or 13 years of service he cannot become the chief of the naval staff for that you will continue to have a britisher even 11 years after you have uh, gained independence so therefore these are the things which makes you start thinking that was there some, was there a fatal flaw somewhere in our system or is there a fatal flaw in our system which i think there is because the way both uh, all all four i will say jena nehru mahatma gandhi and above all i think the uh, uh, most despicable role was played by uh, patel in the, in this whole thing so i will be uh, touching that upon a little later but i just wanted to bring this out so when this committee was immediately formed they were uh, like i said it was a, it was absolutely a, a amalgamation of all religions uh, khan and uh, madan singh were there and they put up a charter of demands which i will just say so amazing the, the thing about the about these demands is that oh the mutiny started off as a um, as against something against uh, bad living conditions and bad food 
uh, that was also uh, it was been beautifully brought out in the book that uh, the uh, nair uh, couple they managed to um, galvanize the issue by putting pebbles into the uh, getting somebody to put pebbles in the dal that people were eating etc so they were just to uh, you know uh, generate a situation so in spite of that though it started off on that manner that it was a, a mutiny for bad living conditions and against racism and abusive language but it quickly turned into a national um, um, uh, event uh, based for uh, uh, aiming towards the independence probably the reason which has been brought out in the book is that the ina uh, um, uh, the, the uh, if you see the charter of demands also there is a demand about that about, about the ina persons in also which i will read that there was ina trials were going on in delhi at that time in which again there was a um, um, multi religious uh, aspect have, uh, has been brought out that general sharnawaz khan al dhelan and captain segal all from three different religions they were all being tried together and that generated a lot of publicity and all this uh, uh, the ina and their uh, the uh, so one of the demands that the uh, if you see that the second demand itself which the charter of committee made was the release of all indian national army personnel uh, uh, unconditionally withdrawal of all indian personnel from indonesia and egypt they were still fighting over there eviction of british nationals from india prosecution of the commanding of the release of detained naval rating again some other points which are there on your screen you can have a look at that and the points about their hygiene of removal of requirements for return of clothing optimum quality of indian food improvement in standard of treatment of officers etc all they came down to serial 9 10 and 11 the first 7 8 points are all related to indian freedom and to nationalism which is the point which was uh, i think which is where the because this movement was heading towards a nationalistic thing that is why politicians got told <coughs> they did not want that their glory should be uh, compromised or shared by somebody else another aspect which has been brought out in the book is the is the spirit and the exuberance of this in december surreptitiously they managed to paint uh, uh, the, the walls of the ins talwar by uh, saying uh, that uh, quit india in club zindabad and then okin like when he was to come in december or of or in december of 45 uh, to the same ship Uh, overnight they man- though there was very strict security etc they managed to uh, write jai hind uh, 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 in uh, quit india etc on the floors and which led to a very embarrassing situation and the commanding officer was sacked and they brought in a guy called king who was ultimately responsible for writing that uh, uh, bring the situation to such a point because he was an um, uh, out and out racist with a very Uh, foul mouth i think that is uh, uh, these two issues we need to bring out i now uh, reasons for the failure of this uh, mutiny i think one of the main reasons was that they were very inexperienced they were 16 to 25 years old and they were probably overawed by the situation and the and the uh, politicians they kept looking over their shoulder for guidance from the um, uh, congress and uh, the only one person aruna asif ali she came to their this thing and even she failed to turn up to address the main conference which was on 18th april at 4 pm where she was supposed to come after the mutiny had started now it is Because it is um, uh, one can only think that if she had come and if the politicians had held their hand, the situation might have been completely different. And again, 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 I think one of the reasons for failure was that they uh, they were managed to taken in by the uh, British double talk, which was there, and they split up 
and went back to the ship if they had stood together particularly when the entire bombay uh, had come out the students the general public and they had all come up and the britishers were forced to fire on them another aspect which i want to bring out is this that indian history makes much of jallianwala bag jallianwala bag with 379 casualties bombay as a, as a result of this mutiny and the british action 300 people died in in bombay some say the figures in the book is mentioned between 300 to 500 even going by the lower side it's still 300 and the jallianwala bag was a different uh, uh, situation was completely different here people were actually rebelling so therefore they should have received much more uh, support rather than anything else as far as even from the historical perspective is concerned the i think uh, jallianwala had uh, 379 dead and 1500 injured and uh, bombay had 300 to 500 and uh, uh, 1000 injured so therefore again uh, this is something which history has overlooked this factor british uh, uh, i think they were also uh, uh, they got they did get very jittery because they immediately ordered a cabinet mission to come they ordered all their forces etc together so what started this jitter was not only that the entire population of bombay had come out in support of them people the, uh, the two newspapers Uh, free press journal and other one those who were not supported by the, those the british had not controlled they were giving them full support and coverage and then another very remarkable thing happened in the royal indian air force and in the royal indian asc parts of them also rebelled now when the britishers called in indian troops to come and quell these re- uh, these rebellions the marathas and the punjabis they refused to fire on them i think that really so therefore okinluck had to order that these people be replaced by the british troops uh, that is i think one of the main reasons in my assessment what the british has realized is because till now they were controlling india through the british uh, uh, indian uh, 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 army uh, who were i would say now in a post independence we can call them mercenaries because they were actually uh were doing this whether they fought world war 1 and world war 2 and in spite of the indians laying down their lives for them in world war 1 and in world war 2 the attitude and the perspective of britishers towards indians didn't change and though they had started discussing the um, independence of india and the but this this uh, cabinet mission in which crips was the um, was also one of them who was ultimately became the crips mission but they were sent post state from there to start discussing this so it was this fear that they would that the indian army would rebel completely uh, uh, which was the ignition point which was given by the indian royal indian naval mutiny i think which was the um, uh, galvanizing point for getting the, uh, the uh, independence is now and then uh, like i think in one of the uh, signals that the cabinet mission to transfer for the board word was used that we have reached a point of no return now i come to the most uh, i have uh, almost at the end of my time um, uh, the most uh, uh, touchy issue of this whole thing is that the role of uh, nehru role of uh, aruna asaf ali uh, sardar patel and mahatma gandhi sardar patel was in bombay at that time and he was the one whom the britishers got through to and he he was almost uh, uh, he agreed with them that we should they should be uh, that they should surrender aruna asaf ali had sent a telegram to nehru to come post his to bombay patel sent him sent nehru a telegram also saying that don't come to bombay mm-hmm. nehru nehru decided to come to bombay but when he landed when he came by train to bombay patel met him 
and he persuaded him not to meet the um, uh, ratings mm -hmm. over there. And it was uh, Patel who, who, who made the rating. Similarly, Gandhi also, coincidentally, Mahatma Gandhi happened to be in uh, Bombay on 18th and 19th February, both days. This was the hottest issue happening in Bombay at that time. But <coughs> Mahatma Gandhi not only did not meet the ratings, surprisingly, he did not even utter a word about the Indian naval mutiny during his two days over there. He kept meeting so many other people over there and did that. And he kept harping on his, I mean, it's blasphemy to say anything against uh, Gandhi in this country. <laughs> But I, 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 I'm going to say it, that he kept harping on the non-violence of this, that even if you gain freedom by uh, non-violence, etc., not <coughs> it doesn't uh, the thing. So ultimately, I think it's somebody mentioned it. Uh, it's uh, I, I, Dr. Kapoor's exact words, which he says that uh, something to the uh, to the tune of that the sword, the dagger was wielded in this case not by the British but by the Congress, they made them fail. And it was Sardar Patel who ultimately, who met the um, uh, the uh, ratings who, who had mutinied Khan and Madanjit and uh, their entire two, three other delegations. So then they one of the ultimately after the discussion, they were told to lay, uh, lay down arms. And they, were, they, they said that you will uh, uh, at least give us an assurance that we will not be victimized. Now, he said, Patel said, yes, we will not be victimized. Khan told him, I said, please put that in writing. And Mr. Patel lost his school and he said, if you, my words don't matter to you, how will my writing matter, etc. and all. I mean, he literally cowed them down and the committee went back to the ratings to this. Now, another chapter starts. When the committee went back to the rating, the rating said <coughs> that, Okay, uh, we want, there's only the Congress saying it, what about the Muslim League? So then they went to meet uh, Jannah. The, they said, okay, let's get a word from them. They went to meet uh, Mr. Jannah. They got a one hour time slot from him. But what happened was that he did not, I mean, he was a very astute lawyer. I think he managed to bamboozle them in the first 15 minutes, only asking them questions, etc. and etc. and all that. And then he um, uh, kind of made them understand that you need to surrender. And he actually bollocked them by saying that what is what are the uniform? You are wearing this, you are wearing that. One of the ratings ultimately had to when he came out, he said he was acting more like my CEO than a political leader. So all these uh, the basic issue that came out was that since, uh, in fact, in words of Nehru, that the ship of freedom is docking very near. Why should we rock it? And probably uh, they never wanted to share the glory of independence, get, getting independence with anybody else other than themselves. And they wanted to do this, uh, get up uh, there to see. I think it is also <laughs> ratings in uh, uh, Mr. Kapoor's book says that while we were fighting on the streets, they were busy distributing cabinet births among them, amongst each other. So I think. Another sad part of the story I want to conclude with is that though they were told that they will not be victimized, <coughs> most of these guys, they found their way back home. They were discharged, they were imprisoned, they were court-martialed, like Chobani was court-martialed, others were found, etc. And they were all sent home with a third-class ticket, as is, as is said in the book, with a third-class ticket in the hand, with B.C. Dutt, who was one of the main um, conspirators or one of the main mutineers leader who started off this whole thing, he went with six rupees and nothing. And he had to fight, even after independence, get the status of a freedom fighter. Nobody else got anything at all from the Indian Army. And ultimately, what it transpires is that in the book is that discipline has taken precedence over nationalism. And none of these people, whether as a policy, whether they were from the Indian National Army or from these mutators, nobody got anything out of the state. Only Tariq SS Madan and uh, B.C. Dutt got the status of a freedom fighter and uh, SS Madan had a ship 
named after him probably in 1991. Uh, that was also an SS ship, not an Indian Navy ship. So I think uh, that is that. All in all, what it comes down to is that this mutiny, if it had been handled properly by the politicians, would have added a glorious chapter to Indian history. It would have ensured that probably it showed as a, as a hypothesis that maybe even if the kind of uh, uh, religious unity that was shown by all of them, that they would not have, uh, probably partition could also have been averted. But, but, but for the uh, um, small political ambition of a political leader who, uh, uh, who wanted to divide the country and rule themselves, this is there. So therefore, this mutiny, which was a very, very brave thing to do, and which had the potential of a great movement, I was consigned to the footnote of the history by conniving politicians and the ruthless British to bring it back to an absolutely make these people non-entities and the politicians to rule the roost again. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sandhu, for so comprehensively uh, summing up and also highlighting the reasons and the facts that uh, led to the failure of the mutiny, as well as the uh, uh, facts that need to be revisited. And um, I would say that the book is a movement of for me, I think it's from uh, innocence to experience, uh, to experience, so to say, uh, as uh, one moves from, uh, as one is totally disillusioned as one reads the book. One has grown up admiring these uh, politicians. As you said, Mahatma Gandhi is like, you know, uh, one person you can't speak against in this country. And we've all grown up admiring him. But by and by, as you grow up, although my children, I, I feel very happy now that they really would speak for Bhagat Singh and against Gandhi, Gandhi's role at that time, which, you know, even as an adult, I would not understand as well as they did as children. But this book, you know, further strengthens that. So thank you so much for a very uh, uh, enlightening uh, 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 your discourse and uh, we move on to our next speaker now for the day and uh, Professor Kinga is here with us. He's our other esteemed panelist for the day. Uh, Professor <laughs> Kinga is a uh, professor in the Department of uh, Defense and Strategic Studies, Punjabi University, Patiala. He has organized several national and international seminars uh, besides being the head of the department from November 2008 to 2016, he has been Vice President, National Congress for Defense Studies, Associate Member, Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis, New Delhi, Member, Board of Studies in Defense and Strategic Studies, Punjab University, Chandigarh, Member, Board of Studies in Defense and Strategic Studies, MDU, Rohtak, Member Board of Studies in Defense and Strategic Studies, Central University, Jammu. You can cut it short, ma'am. Thank uh, you. So <laughs> your, his areas of interest include, special, specialization include uh, uh, Asian, South, Asian just, Inter South, South Asia, international relations and defense economics. And he's an erudite <laughs> scholar with over 25 research articles, two books, and he has <laughs> lectures and talks on national and international forums. So over to you, sir. And of course, the 20 minutes time, time frame stands I'll, for us. Thank you so much. I'll not take, uh, I think, 20 minutes because much has been said by General Sandhu and most of the things uh, have, have been covered. So in fact, uh, I just got two days to uh, read this book. So it was just an eye opener to be very clear. As a student of uh, defense studies, uh, I heard about this mutiny, but the magnitude of this mutiny was not, I was not aware of this thing. And I promise uh, as a student of defense studies, as a teacher of defense studies, that this mutiny, this chapter is introduced, included in the undergraduate as well as postgraduate uh, syllabus in my university at least. And this book will go to the refer reference section and this book should go to the each and every college where defense studies is 
being taught and offered as a subject. Good. Thank you. That is my, that is my commitment, sir. So I start uh, <laughs> with the <a> letters <laughs> that Mr. Nath Bose wrote to the Nehru. So my name was not included in as a leader of the RNI mutiny, and I was subsequently punished with dismissal and imprisonment. Since my release, I have been trying to contact you unsuccessfully for reappointment in the naval services. If there is any law for those who have been dismissed for taking part in the freedom movement of the country, that they cannot enter into their respective services, then I must ask you to explain why yourself being a leader of Congress, a political party, should have the post of a prime minister. That was very touching. <laughs> so in Punjabi, uh, Shah Muhammad, Ek Sarkar Bajo, Fauja Jeta Kantanu Hariyane. So this... Uh, this book is more of a betrayal by the political leaders. And that was not the first betrayal. I think the first betrayal was with uh, Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Suk Sukhdev. So anyhow, I have a few points uh, regarding this book. So uh, formally, I uh, say that good evening, everyone. I'm thankful to Dr. Mahinder Singh, Director, National Institute of Punjab Studies and Bhai Veer Singh Sahitya Sadhan and my co-panelists for organizing this event and giving me an opportunity to deliberate or speak on the topic of very historical importance. So to be very frank, when I received call from Dr. Mahinder Singh, I was a bit reluctant. So once I started searching the internet regarding this and regarding the author, Regarding this mutiny, it was just an eye opener. So I started. <laughs> uh, the book is starts with the dedication to the family members who left for their heavenly award. First of all, please accept my heartfelt condolences for the departed souls. May they rest in peace. And I also pray for the souls of the ratings who laid down their lives during this nationalist movement. So I got this book on 18th of April and hurriedly I had a busy schedule. So, but despite a student of defense and static study, I was not much aware about this rebellion that happened during the last years of liberation struggle of the Indian independence. Then I realized then why this information has not been there in the books, not even in the primary school books, not even colleges, not even the university syllabus. So after a second thought, then I realized that it is not my fault because we have not been told about the real Indian military history as it has not been written in a proper perspective. So as a student also, I have observed that Indian military history has not been writ written in right perspective. So whatever writings uh, by some authentic uh, writers are there by Jaduna Sarkar, B.N. Majumdar, Fauja Singh Bajwa are no doubt. They, they are wonderful. <clears throat> the second thought, uh, to be very frank, that, that came to my mind related to the recent controversies regarding the movie, that is the movie Kashmir Files. And again, I thought that the, this book might not be a part to attempt the his, historical uh, events in some biased way. So that was natural. But when I got the book and read the reviews by the legends like Shyam Benigal and others, so there, there, I thought there is no, not much left for me to speak or discuss, discuss about this book. But this book has been written in 16 chapters with each minute details, with pictures, with references, like a true researcher based on both primary as well as secondary sources. So we should be beholden to the author for telling the story. 
from the perspective of the humble ratings who for their battle abandoned by some of our best known freedom fighters who like hard boiled politicians ready to take on the responsibility of ruling india like dr madhuri said so things are changing perspectives are changing so this is the time then the time to rewrite the real history <laughs> of next generation must be aware of the real events what led to the so called partition before partition what were the real incidents <clears throat> so the royal indian mutiny known as rn 1940 i made this uh, one slides let me check if i can share no i don't think it it is in my it was in my laptop oh dear so the royal indian mutiny of 1946 was lesser known to the people of india than the activities of indian national army subhash chandra bose the 1857 mutiny or the gadar party movements to be very frank the book has been written on the basis of historical backgrounds and the facts of the final phase of india's liberation movement and the records of the villarous deeds of the indian sailors in the uprising the book covers the media reports of warships and the naval establishments who were part of this mutiny as already said the book has been the title of the chapters are very crisp very interesting and very crisp crisp with all the pictures with all authentic information the event of the mutiny are covered in such a way that the person reading a book can imagine that the events like a real movie going on sometimes that reminds me the movie that pearl harbor based on the japanese attack on the us naval establishments so chapter 1 begins with the introduction of initial clashes and explain indian progress at the sea with the quote attributed by the great maratha leader shivaji jalem jasya valem tasya means the root who rules the sea is powerful just like the alfred thayer mahan's theory of sea power in which he says whoever controls the indian ocean controls asia the ocean is the key to seven seas so this chapter deals with the background and set the foundation of coming events <coughs> so chapter 2 and chapter 3 discuss and explain the gallantry role played by the indians in the royal indian navy under british and the counts of the world war 2 the difficulties faced by the ratings the brewing resentment added fuel to the fire like bc that's mutiny of the incidents innocence mutiny of the innocence has been also pointed out in this chapter the gathering storm coupled with quit india movement down with imperialism till the british slogan became immediate cause of the rebellion the untimely death of subhash and gandhi's statement that hypnotism of the indian national army has cast its spell upon us so this kind of uh, this i will explain uh, the details of the secret heroes as uh, dr madhuri has already explained it the secret heroes in chapter 4 explains the planning and the role played by the heroes and the heroines like uh, arma asif ali and others beat madan lal uh, arma asif ali kosam p nair shubhed khan and the ring leaders puri and that so on the book written by dr pramod pramod kapoor is a real account that how the very own ratings involved in the mutiny were betrayed by our own political leaders and how they were let down by accepting the demands to surrender and get fair justice who later went back on their promises to protect the mutineers from punitive actions so while the call 
given by Gandhi on the same issue against the British four years earlier was mm-hmm. still fresh in the minds of the young ratings in which Gandhi mantra was do or die. But who later said regarding the this mutiny, if it was for grievances, fancied or real, they should have waited for the guidance and intervention of political leaders of their choice. If they mutinied for the freedom of India, they were doubly wrong. They could no, not do so without a call from prepared revolutionary party. So the role played by the RSS, CPI, Congress, Muslim League has also been discussed in detail. The chapter five begins with get up son of police, bloody junglies, then son of... So it also contains the information regarding the mutiny and the account of the beginning of the revolt. How HMS Talwar in a strategic naval establishment became the platform for the launch of the mutiny. So chapter six is just like a minute to minute detail. It is a minute to minute detail like an eyewitness who was present everywhere to collect the information. Here, the author deserves full marks for authoring this book with all details, with all references, like a trained researcher. And subsequent ch- chapters, the revolt begins and Hurricane elaborates the spread of mutiny as the news comes day before 75th century anniversary of the revolt, which happened on February 18, 1946. So more than a thousand Indian sailors on ship Talwar and the Royal Indian Navy Signal School in Bombay were on hunger strike in February of 1946 against the ill treatment of Indians in the Navy. When the commander of the ship Talwar, Afran King, called the striking sailors as the son of police and bitches. So this triggered the nationwide strike by the sailors from Calcutta, Madras, Karachi, etc. Between 10,000 to 20,000 sailors, they joined the strike on 18th, So, which shook the core of the British Raj. Chapter 9th, 10th, blood and betrayal and the role of Indian Air Force and the Air Force joining the mutiny as a detailed account of the spread of violence on a minute to minute detail as the movement of the ratings, how the strike spread all over the country, the political divide has also been discussed. If the students, working classes supported the mutiny, there were there was an equally remarkable unity between the leaders of Congress and Muslim League condemning the Royal Indian Navy mutiny. Chapter 11 describes how the Provincial Congress and Muslim League units had opposed the naval mutiny from the beginning. Although Congress leader Aruna Asif Ali, Achyut Patwardhan and Bombay CPI units supported the revolt. And to surprise, Sardar condemned the ratings, calling it nothing but hooliganism. It was it is written on page 2203. So although leaders gave guarantees that they would there would be no victimization of the ratings involved in the mutiny, but intense torture was inflicted on the ratings, like in concentration camps, in which out of uh, on the count is 500, 350 were released, 150 court martialed, not to be heard again. Not to be heard mm-hmm. again. That reminds me a couplet of uh, Bahadur Shah Jafar. So, Kitna Badrasib Jafar, Dafan ke liye. So, further chapters, the lone warriors describe the role of Akbar and Katiawad and the unity, not mutiny. How event, events unfolded and mutiny after initial successes was suppressed and the lack of support from the two major political parties. The Commission of Inquiry in the one of the chapters. So 
there was a movie tashkan files still we are finding the facts so the same thing happened to this uh, 1946 uh, i i can collaborate uh, that what could have happened to them some were some questions always remain unanswered but as the author correctly says inquiry served more as a political tool than a judicial inquiry mutiny of the in, in incident innocence by mr b c dat is in the form of personal narrative yet it furnishes excellent material for historical research and similarly dr pramod kapoor's book 1946 the last war of independence royal indian navy mutiny is an excellent work based on both primary and secondary sources for which the author deserves a big applause it is rightly said that torture and injustice often work as a painful adhesive even when inflicted upon desperate groups with a common cause the young ratings hindus muslims christian dalits brahmin were the different mother tongues of all class and caste they were made to sit around a large wooden vessel full of indigestible dal given half cooked rotis which they dip into the common vessel and eat as a community meal irrespective of their religions and caste differences the act of breaking bread together made them brothers in arms in advertently the british naval officers had united them as born rebels the mutiny starting from the protest against bad food demand for equal pay releases to uh, to the prisoners and the strike spread all over the country during its, its peak period involving 78 ships 20 shore establishment and 20000 ratings the morning that morning at karachi hindustan surrendered only after a gun battle but by this time the force of the strike had spread far and near so dr parmod kapoor uh, i may not be an historian but he is a very good narrator so consequently as factual narration is of greater historical value than his subsequent treatises on the conditions of post independence india and of revolutionary struggles he now and again boldly and assertively describes the treacherous role played by the national leader in the entire episode so there is no flaws in dr kapoor's book a scientific study of contemporary indian history is unfortunately a method known to the present generation of scholars moreover the official attitude is openly discouraging and often hostile the valuable historical data provided by kapoor can be used by those students of contemporary indian history who <clears throat> would decide to venture out the subject despite official dis- disfavor and popular disinterest in issues of historical processes so as that pointed out that the britain british were supposed to leave india in 1948 that forced them to leave in 1947 so no doubt this mutiny Well, they played a very important role, and besides, uh, after World War II, the economy of the British was shaken. It was not possible for them to control the long lines of communication, the rising nationalism. So this is what I know. I have not done justice with the uh, author in a very short span of time. So, but my congratulations and. dr kapoor deserves a big applause a big congratulations from my side so definitely i would like to write a review to get it published good, good. that's all for my side thank you
Thank you so much, Professor Kinga. That was really thought-provoking exposition. And you, as you took us along through the various chapters and the key points of each chapter in the book. When I read Franz Fennot, I felt that the injustice meted out to the Blacks by the French. But here, this, this book, when I read it, they were also disillusioned by the British, the, the, the prejudice and the bias that they faced in the, as they served in the Navy. But what saddens you more here is that they are also betrayed by their own. Yeah, that that's, that's the word. It really saddens us. <laughs> and uh, I am so glad that uh, uh, Mr. Kapoor has pointed this out, brought it to the world. And uh, so the fact that even the panelists who are experts say that this book is a is an eye opener for them that speaks in itself that that speaks volumes for your research and for the book as well uh, you really deserve congratulations for that and we are so glad that you have been able to join us today and um, as i said earlier uh, shri kapoor is the founder and publisher of roli books he has since the inception of roli books in 1978 has been instrumental in conceiving and producing award-winning books like Then and Now series and the seminal Made for Maharajas and Gandhi, an illustrated biography, amongst others. In 2016, he was honored with the highest civil military award in France, Knight of the Leon Honor, for his contribution towards publishing books that have changed the landscape of Indian publishing. He's also the recipient of the Mahatma Award 2021 and Aditya Birla Group Initiative. I would now request you, uh, Ka Mr. Kapoor, to share with us your experiences and your emotions as you researched for the book, your entire journey as in the uh, publishing of this book. So over to you. Well, thank you very much. I've been listening spellbound with the, the praise that has been heaped on the book. Um, when I started writing the book or when I started to research the book, I had no idea, to, or to be honest, I had no idea that I was going to produce a book that will be lauded, applauded by such illustrious uh, people that I see on, on the screen today. Um, I feel very, very gratified. It's very, very gratifying experience. So thank you very much, Dr. Mahindra Singh. Um, and uh, um, Gen General Sandhu and Dr. Kinger and uh, Dr. Chawla, thank you very much. Um, now, first of all, I must I must admit that I I am I do not hold a PhD. I am not a doctor. So you are getting getting it on your fifty years. You will be getting one honorary PhD. But uh, I started as a, a as a slowing down process in in publishing, and uh, and I thought I should I should I have nurtured authors for a good 40, 50 years, yes, and uh, perhaps it's time to for people for for authors to nurture me, you know, and that's what <laughs> is most gratifying that I see here, uh, such illustrious illustrious uh, scholars talking talking so highly about the book. Now, to um, what I would like really is to talk 10 minutes about my experience of writing the book. And if there must be questions in the minds of uh, uh, the, the scholars who are here, if they are still in, 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 uh, with us, to, to ask questions uh, which uh, remains in their mind, and I'll be very happy to answer each one of them. But to begin with, you know, the, the book came quite by accident to me. Um, I was, I was uh, researching for a biography of Mahatma Gandhi, which I did in six years ago, 2016, yes, 2016. Mm -hmm. And I speed read really the uh, hundred volumes of collected works of Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. in six, it took me six to nine months to read it uh, or, and make my own little collected, uh, selected works of Mahatma Gandhi in about mm -hmm. 10 or 12 volumes. So when I reached uh, seven, uh, volume 7980, 
uh, I came across this um, interesting uh, communication between Mahatma Gandhi and a few other Congress um, congressmen, including um, Sardar Patel, where uh, he, you know Sardar Patel has been. I came across this particular letter, which actually increased my intrigue into the subject. Is that when Pat uh, Sardar Patel wrote to Gandhi ji saying, "I have asked, um, I have asked Jawahar not to come to Bombay, yet he is coming." Let him let him come, but this, his presence here will only add fuel to the fire. When I read this, I said, "This must there must be something uh, quite much more than what I'm what I'm reading and what I'm seeing uh, in in this entire uh, episode." Um, there were several reasons why I I picked up this book to to do. One, of course, was uh, that uh, this exchange of letters between. Uh, Gandhi ji and Sardar Patel between Aruna Safali and Gandhi ji, which which left me with a lot of intrigue. That there must be something much bigger. Secondly, I left this episode out of Mahatma Gandhi's biography because I thought it does not uh, directly connect with with his with his uh, uh, with his life. Though um, I, I realize now that that was a mistake, so maybe it was a bit of a guilt. Of the time that also, you know, to, I took a plunge into this. But once I took a plunge into this, I, I, I. The more I read, the more I got excited. And and when you are when you are not uh, a scholar, let's say, uh, put it that way, <laughs> everything comes to you with excitement. You know, you think everything is a breaking story. You know that you are discovering new things, and that that leads to more enthusiasm, etc. So that's how I. I Got into the into this book, and um, then I, I, I of course uh, because that's my forte. I love to do it. I love, as I said in the book, I love to research more than write it. Really, I was also looking for somebody who could help me to write this so that the book could come out earlier. I mean, I, it took me seven years to do the book. I, perhaps it could have come out in three years if I had somebody simultaneously writing. But once you start to research a subject like this, which is where very little is known, you don't stop. You know, and that, that is what happened. I I traveled all over the world. Well, mostly to, to Britain and uh, Bombay and uh, and Delhi. Uh, the, uh, most of the material that was not available in India was available in the National Maritime Museum or Imperial War Museum or National Army Museum or British Library or National Archive in in Kew Gardens. Etc. There are lots of material that we that I came across. Once everything was with me, I started to write the book, and at that time, uh, suddenly a heap of papers arrived uh, arrived from Bombay CID Police CID Department, which totally changed the narrative. Uh, I uh, we had very little um, uh, published sources. They were. Um, BC, that's uh, a book on mutiny of innocence. There was um, Satyan, the, uh, Admiral Satyan Singh's book on on the mutiny, and a few others were of the ratings who had actually got it, were involved in it. But when and you know when but the best book, of course, is BC that. But it's a it's a half of it is about his childhood, etc. And then how he came into into this mutiny. Obviously, the book is a more about himself because it's a, it's an autobiography. It is understandable, and he writes about people like Deb, D E B. Now, I say Deb, meaning I, uh, we have no detail of who Deb is. I, I was struggling to find uh, who Deb is. Suddenly, this 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 heap of paper that comes, it says Rishi Dev Puri. Now, he used to call him Dev, and in Bengali, Dev is Deb. You know, so he was always calling him Dev. And that's how I connected, and that's how much more uh, came out. And it so happened that this Rishi Dev Puri happened to be the uncle of Arun Puri, who owns India today. <laughs> so I I sent some papers to him. I said, "Is this your and to and to Arun Puri's sister Madhutra?" And I said, "Is he is R D Puri related?" He said, "Yes, my uncle. We never believe <laughs> what he used to start." You know that he had a hand in in, in freedom movement. We used to say that look, he's an old man. He just had, 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 had hallucinates, you know. And he, he, so that that's how that came. And then that led me to to uh, to to meet uh, to to connect with 
um, Madan Singh, who, who was, who was, uh, whose family now is scattered all over the world. I must say it was not by intention, but purely by accident. Although the ratings were from a lot of them from Kerala, a lot of them were Muslims, a lot of them were from Bengal because it was a very left oriented uh, uh, um, mutiny you could call because a lot of left leaning people um, naturally lean, lean towards the the the, um, uh, the mutiny. So there were a lot from Bengal, but people who ultimately found um, uh, who ultimately found space as heroes are all Punjabis. You know? Now they, you have Maran Singh who came from a village near Ludhiana. Uh, he he was his father was unlettered um, farmer. Then then came. P. N. Nair and Kusum Nair, whose name Kusum Nair was almost like a Nobel Prize uh, winner of agriculture econ economics. Gunnar mm -hmm. Madal and all the big people wrote uh, forward for our book. They rubbed sh she rubbed shoulders with them, and she was, she became an internationally known agriculture economist. Though mm -hmm. she was only sixteen when when she met P. N. Nair, who who was also a Punjabi. Then comes um, R.D. Puri, I mentioned, I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, and M.S. Khan, by the way, who actually uh, the, um, uh, chose to stay in Pakistan, was also from Daska. Daska is near Sialkot. So he was a Punjabi himself, you know. I saw that four of my, uh, of, of my heroes in the book, and it's not by intention that I said, they all are from Punjab. They, and... Anyway, I mean, this is one aspect, but let's say uh, to, to, uh, to, to those who have not read the book, I would, I would like to start that, that in 1939, when, uh, when the uh, British were mobilizing uh, resources, the soldiering resources for um, World War II, they, they did a rapid mobilization in the sense that they took out advertisements which were uh, making false promises to, to, to some unlettered farmers from here, all people who were not so, so well, well to do, to say that your son, send your son to, to Navy and he will become officer in two years time and he will have this kind of, all kind of the selling dreams which they could, they could have never fulfilled. That, I think that was the beginning, that was the, when the seeds of mutiny were sown. Because once they joined, uh, within two months they realized that there is a problem of living condition, that their living conditions are much worse than the village in a little hut that they were living, <coughs> that there is racial discrimination, that the same food to the same rank was not given, that the food, if they were, if they ran short, they would just put some water into the dal and say, you know, this is what you, you are Indians, this is what you are supposed to get. So there was racial discrimination, bad food. And so this was all simmering. Uh, now, in 42, um, uh, the, uh, the do or die slogan was given by Mahatma Gandhi on the 8th of August. Uh, in, and that's when they were all, all arrested. Aruna Asaf Ali and some uh, young Turks whom I'll call, they were all went underground. They never came out, even though there were big prize on their head. Their, their properties were confiscated. And and was called Milampia. Everything was was done to 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 make them come out. They never came out. They only came out in the middle of forty five when Mahatma Gandhi gave a call. That uh, he, in fact he, uh, this was a direct call to Aruna Asavari. He said, "I know that you become a skeleton. You've done enough for the country. Now come out and serve the country. Now you know it. that is the time when she came out." And then, of course, there was JP uh, at the same time, Jayaprakash Narayan, Achit Patwardhan, uh, Biju Patnayak, all these were young Turks of the time. Mm -hmm. you know, they, 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 I think uh, uh, Aruna Asafari or, or these ratings through Kusum Nair and PN Nair got in touch with, with, with her. And that is how the, it all be, be, began to, to start. Um, there was a flat in 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 in, in, uh, in Marine Drive, number two Rivera, in uh, in Marine Drive, where they would meet every Sunday, because Sunday was the was the Liberty Day for the uh, a free day for the for the Navy. They would come and they would they were addressed by some of these very well known Kwaza Ahmed Abbas, 
and Prithviraj Kapoor, Balraj Sani, all these people mm-hmm. will then impress them. I'm not saying that you will go on the street and, 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 and do bloodshed, you know, but we're just saying that how important the independence is to us. And you being youngsters, you might, I mean, I don't know the details of, of because there's no records of the speech they made, but, but this is how it all began. And then on the 1st of December, on the 1st of December, 1945, the um, uh, Royal Indian Navy thought it was a good PR exercise to call all the Bombay's who's who and show to them how well, you know, the Indians are being looked after, etc. cetera. Um, it was on the 1st of December, but that night, that previous night, BC Dutt and R.D. Puri, they actually uh, wrote slogans all over and uh, saying, quit India and the... And, what are my uh, learned you know, panelists have, have, have just mentioned. And everyone was aghast in the morning when they saw these kind of slogans printed everywhere. No one could be arrested because done so clandestinely and, and so secretly that no one could be arrested. This gave them impetus, this gave them encouragement to do more. And then when uh, the, the, the chief, uh, the uh, Auchinleck was coming to, to address them, that was, I think, in the first week of February, uh, 1946. Uh, no, sorry, it's in sometime at the end of January, in 46, when he was coming. They again repeated the 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 the, the, the same exercise of writing what they call seditious uh, slogans and etc. All over HMIS Talwar, which was a signal school, um, it located in Kolaba in Bombay. Unfortunately, this time they decided that they would also paste uh, posters. And for pasting posters, they needed glues. And the glue bottles were actually discovered from, uh, the, from the, the, the barrack of, uh, of a room of one of the of BC Dutt. And that is how he was caught and his locker was opened and all kinds of, uh, you know, very seditious le- uh, literature was found, letters written to each other saying we should do this kind of mutiny, etc. And that is how the, the, the mutiny began. He was put in jail, but uh, looking at this incident, I don't, I'm not keeping a track of the, of the time. So, sir, please do. I can talk for days on this. So, please do. do, do, do tell controls. me if I have <laughs> Sorry? Madhuri control, she is the monitor. Please, please, please do <laughs> let me know. Because I said, I, I just... Yeah, you want to get excited. emotional, I know. Yeah. So uh, the, 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 he was arrested and, and uh, looking at this, the British changed the commanding officer because they thought the other commanding officer, Cole, was too soft on Indians. So this, uh, uh, this commander King was, was brought in and he was a foul mouthed man. As, as somebody described him, he was a big man with very small brain. And so that is how the, uh, he was brought in and he wasted no time in asserting his, his uh, started to assert his presence. What these, these boys did, that one day they, flagged, they flattened his, his car tire, wrote again the seditious kind of slogans, quit India and, and all kinds of things of the British on his car this time. You know? And this inflamed him so much that he actually came into the back barracks and started to abuse them in un. Um, you know, unmentionable language, uh, sons of police and, and black things and so on is all right, but he went much uh, beyond that. The, the, that was what really was the trigger to, uh, to a simmering, kicking bomb, you could call. And that is uh, the next day, then they, uh, uh, four or five days later, they actually rebelled and the mutiny began. Now the question is that you know many times there's all, there's always a debate whether this was a mutiny or whether this was part of the freedom movement. No no force even in independent India no defense force likes uh, mutiny. I mean General Sandhu is here he would vouch for me that even if you're patriotic you know no one likes uh, no defense personnel will like uh, a, a mutiny. So but this was. Uh, given the name of the mutiny, it was given, the, the, the British told everybody that this was on bad food. They did not talk about the freedom movement at all. So in, on, this, on the surface, in all the papers that you find in, in, uh, in the National Archive here, 
on the surface you will find that this was bad food bad living conditions racial discrimination that no one talks it was only when you read the the inquiry commission report that you realize that it is actually the um, the the free the fervor freedom fervor that actually got them into this and they were youngsters they were they were as 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 you as you may have read they were just 15 to 25 you know they were just youngsters they thought that they were by by doing this rebellion or uprising they were going to to hand over royal indian navy as indian navy to bharat mata this is what their intention mm-hmm. was And, and they were innocent they were really the that they, they were they were innocent they took this they did this atrocity without realizing that what it could trigger into and if it had if it had been allowed to go certainly the army uh, would have joined and air force 1500 people had already come had, had already joined the the strike army would have joined and then this would have been a, a total chaos and uh, for for the for the britishers and the britishers knew this they knew that this is a, a, a situation in fact later on uh, 10 5 years later 7 years later there are enough evidence and and correspondence and communication between delhi and 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 and, and westminster clearly saying that look this time it's not 1857 this is 1946 when there is so much support for them from the public now in 85 1857 initially it was all in the barracks this is now gone much beyond barracks mm-hmm. there are people on the the bombay people are on the streets they are uh, you know there was also uh, surely there were hooligans among themselves who were uh, who were hooligans among among those people who came on the street the mill workers the students the transport workers who actually were also looting the european the european shops the the british in two days just opened fire 50 times in i don't know un, uncountable locations and within three days over 400 people that is the official figure given were killed uh, innocent women who were killed there were uh, 1500 over 1500 people were in the hospital there was not enough uh, medical facility to treat them it was a chaotic situ- situation when it, that started to happen Sardar Patel stepped in, um, and he he um, well he they were all keeping an eye on it from 18th February onward. Mahatma Gandhi was passing through uh, Bombay to go to Pune, and he had a meeting. And surely he would have discussed. There is no evidence to say that he had he did discuss. But uh, Gandhi ji said that he he will not he will not compromise with his principle of non-violence. and he just took a back seat on that i'm sure he may have been directing what what sardar patel should do and sardar patel took on himself to actually make sure that the surrender happens otherwise bombay will be burning and and that is how the 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 ratings were called and they were explained that look you you had no business to go into mutiny when you are we have <laughs> Less, we are not going to provide you all the details are in the book. So I am not going to go into that. That the, the details they met for the all for all night. Six fifteen in the morning was the was the target given to them that you have to surrender by six fifteen. They they were Madan Singh who who was a very upright officer who who said that look we are we have been taught to fight with guns and we don't care about our life even if we perish in this we should let let we'll perish. We don't know how to fight with charkha. We want to. We do. We know how to fight with guns, and so there was this group, and there was M S Khan, who was slightly more educated, soft, spoke English better, and he 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 kept telling them that look, we are not getting anywhere. The 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 there is so much power on the other side that they will just finish it, and we won't. No one will even remember us. You know, I mean, they nobody remembered them. That's another story, but. Um, This is how, like two minutes before six fifteen, they they wept like children. They hugged each other because for good five days they had fought uh, every every you know they had they had as you may have seen in the film they had they, them by the scruff of the neck. You know? I mean they had they had uh, all the ships under control. Even HMIS Narmada, which is the flagship of the Fokering of the chief of navy in India, was in what had become a war. Control room for for the rating. Mm. They were they were they were they were signal uh, ratings, so they knew how to 
uh, you know, send signals and receive signals. They were operating from that Narmada. They had, they had, and they pointed the gun towards uh, the shore, the gateway of India, uh, the dockyards, and the yacht club, and said, any harm comes to us, we'll blow these buildings. Of course, they would not, have, because Indians would have also suffered. So this is, this is and then uh, as, as, uh, as it was read in the, from the book that uh, Sadar Patel persuaded them, they, they surrendered, and then they were told, Sadar Patel told them that there will be no victimization. Now, within three days of that, there was a big uh, a rally or uh, 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 the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru and Sadat Patel addressed a big rally on the 26th of February, where it was presided by, by Sadar Patel. Sadar Patel said that we will, um, we will do our very best to see, I mean, you could see that the tone was getting different, that we will make sure that none of you, none of these ratings are victimized, etc. Soon after that, when, when, uh, um, uh, when Jawala Nehru's turn came, he came and he said, look, I think we are promising, openly he said, I think we are promising something which is much beyond our capabilities. We, we will, in, in other words, he was saying that I don't think we'll be able to, 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 to handle that, you know, if they are victimized, they are victimized, you know. And, and so that, that is what happened. Now, worse than that, when, uh, the independence came when, as as one of the letters were read, when these ratings of uh, uh, Sadar Patel, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, and later, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Menon, the defense minister in in the fifties, he was. They were told like a cyclo style letter was given to them, saying that the government, in principle, has decided that those who were involved in the mutiny will not be restored. Will will. Mm -hmm. And and those who were who were dismissed with disgrace will not even have uh, opportunity to serve in the civil side of the government. Mm -hmm. Now that is something I I, is, I cannot understand. Mm -hmm. I can understand that they were for till seventeen years they were they were British naval uh, naval chiefs who were British. They couldn't have taken these uh, ratings because they rebelled against. Uh, <laughs> uh, against the, uh, the the British, but in the independent India, even post fifty eight, none of them were given any position. So that's that's my take on the book. That's my story in the book. Uh, but I'll be very happy to answer questions if there are any from uh, my uh, our fellow panelists and people who say you know who lauded the book so much. And I remain very grateful for, to them for such nice words. Sir, I have a question. Yes, please. So since you have written about Gandhi, Ji. it must have taken you four to five years to write a yes. book. Yes, five, six and years. Now you have written this 1946. Yes. How do you see Gandhi? Well, I, I see him as a, you know, I started the book thinking he was a Mahatma. I ended the book thinking that he was a, he was a poet. Yeah, true. Though I, I have not been a very great admirer of uh, Mahatma Gandhi ji, but this book book has again changed my perceptions about him. So would but you, sir, like, to, would you yes. like to write more about him now? Yes, I think he was a remarkable human being. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. He was a remarkable human being, a determined man, a, 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 a man who who actually sacrificed, rightly or wrongly, yeah, yeah. sacrificed his family life for for his politics, mm -hmm. even so much so that he would he would make sure that his family gets nothing because he should not be accused of nepotism. So that mm -hmm. was also a very and people asked him, you know, even uh, Raja Ji asked him, who was related to him, asked him that look, if 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 uh, if you had to be so stern about your family, why did you marry? Why did you <laughs> create a family? Mm -hmm. So the, there was a very strange side of the man, but there was no doubt that he was a he was a great man, a man who, who went beyond a human, uh, you know, normal human being. His oh. politics, yes, you can, you know, it's very. He was a very, very, very astute politician. Yeah. So I think you've answered that very aptly. He was a politician. He wasn't a Mahatma, I would say, but definitely an astute politician. 
uh, a greater human being than uh, most of us. But yeah, uh, I also have one observation that he was actually, I would say he was unjust to his family. Very, very unjust. It was unjust yeah, was. to have yeah, treated his family like that. Yeah, so that's was. where he becomes a human in that sense that, you know, while he was greater in certain ways, <laughs> he was also lesser at it, at some points in his life. Yes, I agree. He was, he was not good to his family at all. If you pick up, <laughs> if you pick up my book, there is a letter which I got translated from, uh, which was I found translated from Gujarati into English, written by his uh, eldest uh, son. It's an eleven-page letter. I have, I have produced the late letter in full. But the letter begins by saying that you are like a ringleader in a circus, and we are like animals in the circus. This is how you are treated. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree, actually. In, a, in, a, in, a, in South yes. Africa, in South Africa, when uh, he was he was being jailed for the first or the second time, I think uh, uh, Kastuba was very very unwell. He writes a letter saying that look, uh, I have to I have to be in this fight for Indian, I mean for freedom for the uh, for the that was lesser privileged and so on. I know you're not well, but. If you die in the process, you'll be a martyr. You know, this is the kind of letter he would write to his own family. So, I mean, it, it, I, but he gets yeah, glory but, for it. They don't. No, I mean, they, 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 he, he sometimes used to say, "I'm like a, a peaceful general of an army." My, for me, soldiers and the sons are are the same. But then, you know, why create a, you know, you, you can create a, a, a brigade, you can create an army, but you, you don't get, create family to destroy them. Or yeah. not even the brigades are, are created to, to destroy them. <laughs> so he was, a, it, it was a, but yet he was such a determined man that one, that he would inflict from all, all the problems on himself, the physical, the emotional, everything. He had the capacity to do that. Right. So, you know, in, in that respect, you call him a Mahatma. Because I don't think there are ordinary human beings can go through all that. But at the same time, I think either he was too self-centered or, yes. uh, you know, I, I, I really, for six or seven years of, of research on Mahatma Gandhi is not yet enough. There are people who, who, who have given two generations on, on, on research on Mahatma Gandhi and yet they cannot talk with conviction about his personality. Absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Kapoor Sab. We really appreciate that you made us privy to your uh, valuable experiences and encounters and your passion actually came through in your talk. And uh, it was really an invigorating session. And I'm sure that posterity is going to be really, really thankful to you for having uh, written about the unexplored, the unsaid and the unwritten Unsung. Heroes. Unsung heroes, yes, for sure. And, uh, and Professor Kinger is, of course, going to introduce the book as a part of the curriculum. I'm so glad about that. Mm, that's so, a good. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think Professor Avail Singh would like to say something now. Please. Thank you. Thank you, Madhuriji. I was listening to but that is my problem. I can understand. You see, uh, my, my family migrated about 150 years ago to yeah. Calcutta. So they yeah. knew Bengali better than Punjabi. Yeah. It's my misfortune, but that is what it is. I think that Kapoor Sahib has been a mutiny to understand everything that or किन्ने सारे लोग मारे गए उन्हें तो ये कितने गल नहीं हो रही कितने हिस्ट्री दी किताब के नहीं किसे टेक्स्ट बुक ची चैप्टर नहीं है दा बट इधे इस किताब दे पीछे जो मैं बैठा बैठा सुन दिया डीकोड कर रहा सी क्यों है कि तुष्टी प्रेजेंट निजाम जेड़ा है का वो केरा नू हीरो बना रहा है ये तो so, I think that the book is written in the book. We are the students of literature. We are the students of literature. We are the students of literature. We are the students of history. We are the facts. But we used to uh, uh, decode the things. 
ਕਿ ਦੇ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਬਿਹਾਈਂਡ ਦੀ ਸੀਨਸ ਕਿ ਹਾਊ ਹਾਊ ਯੂ ਥਿੰਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦੀਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਹੂ ਵਾਸ ਬਿਹਾਈਂਡ ਦੀਸ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਸੋ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਟ ਇਟ ਇਨ ਵੇਰੀਅਸ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜਸ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਆਮ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚਣੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਖਾਸ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਦੀ ਜਨਰਲ ਪੀਪਲ ਜਨਰਲ ਰੀਡਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੰਦਾ ਪਿੰਡ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੈਠਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਗਾਉਂ ਚ ਬੈਠਾ ਹੀ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਮਸਟ ਲਰਨ ਵਾਟ ਵਾਸ ਹੈਪਨਿੰਗ ਐਟ ਦੈਟ ਟਾਈਮ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਮੇਰੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਨਵੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਸੀ ਇਹ ਨਵੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਨਵੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਸੀ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਜਸਟ ਟੂਡੇ ਆਈ ਲਰਨ ਥਿਸ ਕਿ देयर ਵਾਸ ਵਨ ਮਿਟਰੀ ਆਲਸੋ ਇਨ ਦਾ 1946 ਤੇ ਜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਰਗੇ ਯਾ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਟਰਾਈ ਥੈਟ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਟਰਾਈ ਥੈਟ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਰਿਟਨ ਟੂ ਬੁੱਕਸ ਇਨ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਥਰਡ ਮਾਈ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਔਨ ਫਰਮ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਟੂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਥਰਡ ਬੁੱਕ ਮੇਕਿੰਗ ਅ ਮੂਵੀ ਵੁਡ ਆਲਸੋ ਬੀ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਆਈਡੀਆ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਫਾਸਟਰ ਯਾ ਨੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮਚ ਆਵਿੰਦ what could be more gratifying than somebody is worth going to, you know to all the regional languages mm-hmm. that that so, it should be propagated sir it should be promoted in this should be uh, part of syllabus there is likely it should to be, be a part movie. of syllabus there is likely yeah. to be a movie soon because mm. i think my office is handling i'm uh, as an author i shouldn't be handling this so they are handling it uh, very good very good so congrats you deserve it I think maybe a serial a web series or something would be a mm. better idea we'll get more details in that probably right it is a ott platform oh, what right. they call oh, that, that, that that's good the eagle will make it so thank you uh, prabhut kapoor ji for bringing this book thank and uh, also thanks to our panelists dd sandhu saab and kamal kingri ji and also to madhuri ji who was uh, moderating this session very beautiful session ਸੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਹਰ ਮਹੀਨੇ ਟਾਕ ਵੀ ਕਰਨੇ ਆ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਟਾਕ ਇਸ ਵਾਰ 30 ਅਪ੍ਰੈਲ ਨੂੰ 30th ਨੂੰ 4 ਵਜੇ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਨੂੰ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਔਰ ਇਸ ਟਾਕ ਦਾ ਇਸ ਵਾਰ ਸਬਜੈਕਟ ਹੈ ਅਕਾਲੀਸ ਪਾਸਟ ਐਂਡ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੈਂਟ ਔਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਪੀਕਰ ਨੇ ਖੁਦ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਮਹਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਅਕਾਲੀ ਮੂਵਮੈਂਟ ਤੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਕੰਮ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਇਹ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਟਾਕ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਜੋ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਅਕਾਲੀ ਦਲ ਦੀ ਹਾਲਤ ਹੈ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਮਹਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਇਹ ਕਿਉਂ ਹੋਈ ਤੇ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਹੋਈ ਇਹਦੇ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚਣ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਨਗੇ ਬੜੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਹੋਏਗੀ ਸੋ ਸਭ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੀ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ 30th April ਨੂੰ ਸ਼ਾਮ 4 ਵਜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਇਸ ਟਾਕ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਆਓ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਸ਼ੁਕਰੀਆ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਫਾਰ ਮੋਰ ਫਾਰ ਗਿਵਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਦਿਸ ਓਪਰਚੁਨਿਟੀ ਟੂ ਲਰਨ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਰੀਲੀ ਨੋ ਆਮ ਆਮ ਆਨਰਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਸਰ so you've Thank lived you, with this for 8 years they may amazing yes. and it comes across in your i could see that sadness in your eyes yeah. earlier and then that passion also when you spoke and uh, yes as i said i could keep on speaking you know there is uh, right. this is more uh, than a phd actually yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you good, good thank experience. you thank you so much everyone thank you it's a great experience really yes thank you